Hello! Hello, hello, hello! Hintay po tayo muna sa iba. Hello! Oops. Hello! Okay. <laughs> Nag-e-echo. Magandang uh, hapon po sa inyo. At magandang umaga po naman sa Pilipinas. Good evening here in New York. And good morning over there in the Philippines, Philippine Island. Okay, so uh, we'll uh, start uh, a little bit as we wait uh, other people to join us this evening. This is a continuation for, of lecture number three, part one, the process of salvation. We have not uh, finished uh, last week everything that I plan to tackle on part one. So um, we'll continue today. Uh, last, uh, last, uh, last week, we uh, look at uh, the process of salvation on the point of view or, or the part of the Father, okay? The work of the Father. And uh, we have seen and discussed uh, several terms that are uh, very important in the process of God, uh, the Father, planned for uh, the salvation of, uh, of man. So we look at election, predestination, and adoption. So three of uh, very important terminology uh, that relates to salvation and uh, uh, these terms, especially election and presentation, are causing um, uh, not confusion, but uh, uh, different uh, viewpoint among uh, theologians. Uh, even uh, uh, in the early years, in the early years of Christianity, they are debating and trying to understand this concept okay so uh, that's why uh, if you are aware of uh, several um, several uh, um, denominations or or you know belief uh, that pertains to this their ten terminologies and it's easy that uh, a lot of denomination can identify with themselves on uh, which uh, camp uh, they belong on or, or what are the emphasis uh, they want to uh, uh, to put on the process of salvation. But uh, and, and some has uh, give, gave a, a very high regards with uh, the exception to the extent of ex uh, the exception of, of uh, man's responsibility to salvation. Okay, so this, this uh, it seems, it seems in our mind, okay, in our human understanding, uh, uh, that sovereignty and man's responsibility cannot be, uh, cannot agree, okay, cannot agree together. And as I said, uh, one scholar that I uh, have a high regards uh, said that uh, we may not reconcile it here on the earth, okay? Some scholars, as I said, some theologians are uh, sometimes in conflict with their uh, explanation and idea. But he said, which I like, that uh, he said that, uh, you know, we may not reconcile it on earth, but in the mind of God, it is reconciled. And that is true. He used to say, why? Because it is very clear that uh, both concepts has been revealed in the scripture. So you cannot uh, get away from that. You cannot eliminate elimination. You cannot eliminate destination. Specifically, these two terms are biblical terms in the language of Apostle Paul. Okay, so um, we see that that's 
that is in uh, uh, the father. Um, that's in the father's uh, uh, side or function that uh, he elected people to be saved from the foundation of the world and predestined them to salvation. So predestined means to mark them out of uh, out of the people's earth. Now we may question. We may question: Is that fair? Is that uh, is that fair in the sense that God uh, elected some and did, did not elect others? You know, so in our mind uh, it seems, but uh, there's there's no partiality, or we cannot uh, charge uh, as Paul wrote in Romans chapter nine, that he says that uh, everything is not. Uh, the election or the choosing of God with the example of Esau and, uh, and Jacob. Uh, uh, it's God elected not on the basis of man's uh, uh, status or, or, or description or character or attitude. So regardless, we to say God choose uh, uh, according to his own purpose. So he said there that uh, God chose even before uh, Jacob. He chose Jacob uh, even before Jacob was born. Even Jacob has done things. Okay, so it is because it's, it's in God's uh, sovereign will. Okay, so... Uh, now that we are a Christian, it's very clear that God has chosen us. God has elected you even before the foundation of the world. Yeah? And he predestined you to be safe. So uh, our response is uh, praise the Lord. You know, it's, it's, it's a, a heart of gratitude, a, good, a heart of, uh, of thanksgiving that uh, out of millions, out of uh, people around the world, you are specifically chosen to be one of those elect. Okay, so why other people are that? I don't know. I have no answer. Uh, why other is not elected or why others are not chosen? I don't know. That's why Paul says it's based on God's sovereign will. You should say he decides and you cannot question it. Okay, in the first place, everybody are are sinful everybody sin against god and and nobody is qualified or nobody uh, can uh, uh, say that uh, uh, they are good enough to be qualified into the grace of god no so everybody is sinful in our own volition in our own choice we are sinful and um, and even and even if we have a choice we will not choose god that's what the bible says okay so it is because of god's urging it's because of god's uh, um god's uh, uh idea concept that you will be saved then you will be saved Okay, so that's God's responsibility or, or the Father's, uh, wo the work of the Father in regards to our salvation. We will continue that uh, in our study today. Uh, the, work, uh, the work of, uh, of Jesus Christ, okay, and the work of uh, the Holy Spirit. All right, so we will uh, still uh, be waiting. I, I just uh, give you a synopsis of what we have taken last week as a continuation. Uh, we will discuss tonight uh, about uh, the work of Christ in the process of salvation. Okay, thank you, Malu, for uh, typing the lesson, the outline of the lesson that others who don't have access to our Google Classroom can take notes if you want and uh, picture it that you will have uh, uh, 
the the idea and even um, the verses that we are to uh, verses that we are to uh, to read in regards to this lesson. Okay. Right. Okay. Wala pa yung taga-check ng ating attendance. Busy busy pa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, maghihintay po tayo muna. We are still low in our attendance. Okay, uh sige, tingnan muna natin isa-isa. Uh, we have a Facebook user here. Which I think uh, Anne, si Anne ito, yes, Anne, uh, si Malu, thank you Malu for uh, typing the lesson tonight uh, from Japan. And this also a Facebook user, who is that? Oh, si Anne nga, si Anne pa rin yan. Good evening daw, si Ann. Congratulations, Ann. Nag-first date sa work na si Ann sa Ohio. Okay. Sa Ohio siya ngayon at meron na siyang trabaho. Alright. Uh, okay, when? When Batan is here too? Uh, si Pastora Nausi. Okay. Uh, si Sister Hannah. Sister Hana, nasa bahay ka na ba? All right. Kausapin kita mamaya, Sister Hana, para sa next week. Okay, tayong dalawa lang. Huwag mo sasabihin kay Sister Mel. Wala pa siya, hindi niya narinig. Surprise. <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, mamaya ka usapin kita, Sister Hana. All right, si Brother Angel. Brother Angel, good evening, good morning to everyone. Yes. Okay, uh, sino naman tong uling Facebook user na ito? Facebook user, good morning, or good evening, and... Hindi ko makita itong pay. good evening po. Saan kaya ito? Baka sa kabila. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Saan natin sa kabila? Kasi uh, wala yung pangalan. It means to say, you have not uh, given permission to the StreamYards to publish your name because uh, from Facebook, uh, Facebook sent uh, your messages to StreamYard that we can publish it because we are using StreamYard to stream. But if you have not uh, given permission, StreamYard giving permission uh, because of privacy, you know, so it means that uh, you have not, uh, okay, so tingnan ko na lang kung sino yan sa ating Okay, sa ating page. Do sa ating page, sa Facebook page, ay, uh, bakit wala? Page ba yan? Group. Sa, sa group. Oh, si ano? Si Sister Toy ito, si Sister Toy. Okay, Sister Toy, good evening. Nandun siya sa ating isang uh, group. Sa ating isang group. Okay, so bubuksan natin. Dalawa, we are streaming on three platforms. For your information, we are uh, live on two uh, Facebook, uh, sa ating page and sa ating group. So we have... Uh, a Facebook page, which uh, this, uh, usually we are using the Grace Gospel Missions of New York page. Uh, and then we also have a uh, Facebook 
cage or, or, or rope, which is the um, uh, what? the systematic just for this the systematic uh, the grace institute of biblical studies okay so we also have that i also up uh we will see that okay all right all right see ya uh, pastor bell all right okay I don't know if we will start. Wala pa yung ating taga-check kasi ng attendance. Okay. Maybe let's pray. Kuha muna ako na inumin, okay? Time out muna. Kuha muna ako. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll pray before we uh, start. Ina nate sila mahintay. Okay, Geraldine is also here. Okay. Okay, Lord, uh, we come to you this evening as we continue our study on the process of salvation. You may uh, we ask that uh, you help us. In our understanding, although our understanding limited, but uh, we thank you because uh, you have uh, definitely revealed these truths in us. We may not really fully understand it, but uh, we accept it because uh, you have revealed it. Thank you, Lord, and we thank you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, then it is the si Rochelle. Okay, so we go now to uh, go now to uh, the continuation. Uh, as I said, uh, we finished uh, uh, look looking the the work of the Father in the process of our salvation. So we will look at Christ. Okay, let me see. All right. Okay, here we go. Okay, the work of Christ. Now, uh, in discussing, in discussing uh, the work of Christ in uh, the process of salvation, we know that uh, uh, what Jesus did is so supreme. Uh, because uh, what he did on the cross, what he uh, he's the one who paid the penalty uh, of our sins. He's the one who uh, he's the one who uh, 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 he's the one who satisfy okay satisfy uh, the wrath of God uh, because of sin. So in other words. Uh, salvation becomes possible. Although, you see, although God the Father elected, predestined, and planned for adoption, okay? But uh, without Jesus Christ, without Christ fulfilling his substitutionary uh, uh, death on the cross, that, that means nothing, okay? In other words, although God planned for salvation, people of sinners it will not uh, it will not happen it will not uh, be fulfilled uh, without uh, uh, without the part of Jesus Christ who died uh, for our say he is the one who paid the penalty in other words uh, he's the one who satisfied the wrath of God we know that though God uh, uh, 
uh, and because of sin, okay, the Bible says because of sin, the wrath of God is uh, uh, revealed from heaven. Okay, the wrath of God because of sin. Because God is holy, God is separated from sin, and because of sin, uh, he, he is angry with sin. So the only way, the only way to satisfy that uh, wrath, the only way to appease uh, God's, uh, uh, God's wrath is somebody has to pay the penalty. Okay, And the Bible says that the penalty or the wages of sin is death. And that's why it, it, it was exemplified even from the beginning from the very beginning. And even at the time, the moment that Adam and Eve sinned, okay, the first sin, the original sin, God has a picture there uh, uh, he, uh, how that uh, sin uh, will be a peace. So through uh, uh, death. Somebody has to die, and that's the only satisfaction that God uh, uh, will accept. So what he did, when, when Adam and Eve hid themselves from God, uh, they said, and, and God said, why are you ashamed? Because he said, we are naked. And what uh, Adam and Eve uh, uh, did, they uh, tried to cover their bodies with the leaves, you know. They tried to make their own clothes, leaves, but uh, that is not, uh, you know, those are uh, not uh, 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 enough to cover their, uh, their nakedness, to cover their sin. So what did God uh, did? He clothed them with animals' clothing. So what does it mean? That God killed an animal? To get the clothing to cover the sins of Adam and Eve. So even before, even in 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 in, in the Garden of Eden, the moment that the first man, Adam and Eve, sinned, it was exemplified and pictured the death of an animal that will cover sin. And throughout the Old Testament, we see. Uh, uh, even before uh, God established the law to Moses, the uh, uh, sacrificial law to Moses, uh, it has been practiced by, uh, by, by Jacob, by Abraham. Okay? Uh, uh, the, the way to, to go to God is through the uh, sacrifice of an animal, through the killing of an animal. And until uh, he gave, uh, until God gave a uh, systematic and structured procedure and how to do it in the sacrificial system through the law that Moses uh, uh, has written in Leviticus, in, in Numbers, in Deuteronomy. So all those uh, uh, provisions of the sacrifice. So uh, what animals should be sacrificed, how, how. They will do it, okay? So uh, different offerings, different sacrifice for different sins that they have uh, committed. Okay, so even from the Old Testament, God has said that uh, the only way uh, to cover your sin, because during the time, uh, the, the blood, Okay, that taken from the animal that has been killed is sprinkled into the altar uh, to cover uh, as a as a uh, a symbol of covering the sin of the people. So, in other words, uh, God will see the blood. God see the death. So, God when, when God saw uh, the blood that is being poured and being sprinkled into the altar, he knew that somebody had died for sin, and that uh, satisfied uh, uh, and appeased the wrath of God against sin. Okay, so 
And all of these are picture, or these all of these are are uh, prefiguring uh, uh, the final sacrifice that uh, Jesus Christ will uh, will offer uh, on the cross uh, of Calvary. Okay, so uh, it is uh, the whole Bible. Okay, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. The theme of it is the sacrificial and uh, substitutionary atonement of Jesus Christ for the sins of the world. That's the that's the uh, the, the scarlet thread, as we say it. Somebody has said that you can identify the scarlet thread running from Genesis to the Revelation, uh, uh, and that is. Uh, that is uh, the sacrificial uh, uh, and substitutionary atonement and death uh, to appease God's wrath for the sins. So the death of Jesus Christ is a substitutionary atonement for our sins. And also, okay, the word, okay, so another important aspect, another important aspect of salvation that uh, we need to look at, okay, is sanctification. Okay. Sanctification. Okay, sanctification. Let's see. Sanctification of the believers. The, uh, the word Sanctification is from the Greek word hagiasmus, which means to set apart. Okay, to set apart. Sanctification. Uh, other terms means uh, to become holy, to become righteous, uh, to become saint. So all of those terminology from both the Old and the New Testament pertains to the process of sanctification now we have to understand the concept of sanctification because um, in the scripture there are three what we call the three tenses of sanctification in this process okay so we have the, the, uh, we have to understand this very carefully we need to understand this uh, that uh, the sanctification is not just a, a one time, okay, a, a one tense, but we will see the three tenses, okay, the three actions that pertains to sanctification. So, the English word that is equivalent, as I said, is are, are the words saint, holy, uh, holiness, righteous. So uh, those those are the terms, as I said, refers to sanctification both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. With respect to the New Testament believer, however, uh, so in, in in our in our experience in our time, the New Testament believers, uh, we can see the three aspects or the three tenses of sanctification. The first is what we call positional sanctification. Okay? Positional sanctification. What does it mean? Uh, positional uh, sanctification. It refers to the position, the status, the standing of believers on the moment he accepted Jesus Christ. The moment he embraced uh, uh, the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ into his life, uh, how God positionally God looks at look at you as holy. Okay, at the moment, means to say, holiness or sainthood is not really you know a process. We will look at that, but 
uh, positionally you are a saint. Positionally you are holy. It means to say you're standing because of Jesus Christ. Okay, because when you're standing uh, in front of God, it is not uh, you're standing now with Jesus Christ. So God sees Jesus Christ in you. You are being covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. So in so doing, because God saw the blood of Jesus Christ, therefore, God's wrath is a peace. So he declared you righteous. So in other words, you're standing before God as holy. You're standing before God as saint. Okay, let's read several scripture for this. Okay, Romans 1, 7 says to all who are beloved of God in Rome, called as saints. There, there you go. Okay, that terminology Paul says, he is, he used, uh, uh, he used it in the past tense, right? Because you are beloved of God, because you are believers of God, because you have accepted Jesus Christ into your life, you are called past tense because of your, of your faith in Christ. You are called as saints, you see? So in other words, uh, you don't need to really... Uh, it, it is that uh, in the first place, you have not done good works yet. The moment you accepted Jesus Christ, you are declared righteous. Is that uh, neat, right? And so that you don't need to do anything yet. You have not done anything yet. That's your first step. Just pray the prayer <clears throat> of acceptance and you accept Jesus Christ into your heart. Have faith on God. <clears throat> and, and, and God declares you righteous. God called you well, saints. That. Okay, that is, uh, bear in mind, this is the first uh, uh, aspect. Okay, positionally, you're standing as saints. Okay, so Romans 1 7. And also, 1 Corinthians 1 2. To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who have been sanctified in Jesus Christ. Okay, past tense again. Because the church are believers who believe in God, they are, have been sanctified. This is to say, done. Done deal. And then look at this saints by calling. Okay, saints by calling. With all who in every place call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. So that that is your position uh, and standing with God. You are a saint. Okay? You are a saint. Maybe you are not, uh, you are uh, a, la a person, a believer that uh, have failed and many weaknesses. You know, little sin there, mistake here, but still that does not affect your standing with God. You are still a saint positionally. Okay, so in other words, you, you, you didn't acquire this by your good works, by doing something uh, to make you saints. So unlike uh, uh, one of those uh, traditional churches, okay, uh, there is a process of sainthood, right? There's a process of be, before you become a saint, you will be uh, blessed kamuna. At uh, yung mga pinapatawa nila dito, eh, those are already dead. Okay? They are already dead uh, uh, martyrs, dead uh, uh, saints, and then, you know, they will uh, study the life and uh, if you pray and you are healed, so how many healing? I think three healing in the name of that person. You will be declared blessed. And then another five miracles out of your name, you will become saints. No, that's not biblical. So we cannot uh, see that the process of sainthood. Here, the Bible declares the moment that you accepted Jesus Christ, you have been sanctified you are called saints. If you look, uh, this is the opening, uh, the opening um, 
words of, of Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth. And if you will continue to read the book of Corinth, eh, sasabihin nyo yung mga taga-Korinto para namang hindi mga tunay na Kristiyano, right? And, and the, the reason why Paul wrote a lengthy letter to them because of the issues, because of immorality, and, and because of fighting, because of division, <laughs> all sorts, all sorts, all sorts of, of uh, not being a saint. But, in spite of that, uh, Paul addressed them as saints by calling. Positionally. Okay? Because uh, that is your position. The moment you believe in Christ, you are called saints. Okay? Another one also in Second Corinthians 1.1. 1, 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth with all the saints who are throughout Achaia. So you see, Apostle Paul, he addressed uh, the believers as saints. Okay. That is his usual address. Because he knew, okay, uh, uh, Paul developed for us uh, the theology of, uh, of sanctification. First of all, that we are uh, positionally uh, saint. Also, Ephesians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ with Jesus. So you see that uh, uh, he addressed also these Ephesian believers as saints. It, it is his usual and common uh, greetings to the believers, regardless of, you know, you are mature, regardless you are a new believer, okay? Uh, uh, in, in, in the mind of Paul, as long as you, uh, as long as you accepted Jesus Christ, then you are saints. So in positional uh, sanctification, uh, the believer is accounted holy before God. He is declared a saint. Yeah. Okay, so uh, regardless, as I said, the Corinthian church, with all the carnal believers over there, so regardless of that, um, see any who is this? This is Tertoy. No, Atiman. Yeah. Alam po, the check lock attendance. Dalawa na sa Facebook. Ah, ayaw yung wala pang alam. Jen. Geraldine, Pastor Mel, Giselle. Okay. All right. So, not yet. They're at usual. Okay. Okay, yeah. The Facebook user. Si Jin ba? Eh, hindi si Jin na ba? Ano eh. And there's it, but it's almost a gym and there's a gym. Chin. Oh, Angel. Okay, it's in the name of our Facebook user. Sin a Facebook user, and you're a pangalan. Can you, can you uh, put your name? I comment you, because PJ and Atimel, though. Eh. Even si Ronnie. Si Ronnie. Is that your Ronnie? No. Kasi, Okay, so we will just figure it out. Okay. Okay, let's see some Maria Talanyan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, comment me, Malu, now 
now I know I no. And uh, now I understand why do they have to kill yes. an animal? Yes. Now th those in the Old Testament the animals are, are figure. Uh, those are what we call um, types. Types of Jesus Christ. Perfect sacrificial lamb is Jesus because yeah. he is sinless. The wages of sin is death. Uh, when you got the angel, cover the sins of the people. Yeah. Right. Di po ba? Di po ba kapag nag-offer mga pare sa Old Testament, kung hindi ka tanggap-tanggap sa Lord, mamamatay ang pare na nag-alay? Hindi, <laughs> di ba? Uh... Maybe you are pertaining yung sa, sa, sa Holy of Holies. Sa Yung Kippur. Yung Kippur, the Day of the Atonement, which happened only once a year, when the high priest, it is the mm. high priest, the only, high, the only, the only one, person, once a, year. Okay, once a year, will go into the Holy of Holies, uh, bringing sacrifice. Uh, the sacrifice for the whole nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't know, Kung, you know, kung may namatay ng high priest. But uh, that, that is true. If the high priest, even the high priest, of course, if you are a high priest, you know the protocol. <laughs> you will not just go inside, you know, without even... Uh, si Brother Rick pala yun. Okay. Ah, si Brother Rick. Yeah. Sabi siya si Brother Rick. Okay. <laughs> yun nga, ano, uh, na mamatay yung, ano, yung high priest. Yeah. That's uh, why they put... Uh, there, there is to record... Even the Old Testament, there is a high priest na, na na na. Na. Okay. So we don't, we don't know. But of course, uh, that is the regulation. If the high priest will enter the Holy of Holies, uh, not worthy, he will, he will die in the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it means that, uh, uh, but of course, if you are the high priest, uh, you are to make sure that uh, you did everything of the cleansing. Because there are ceremony to the cleansing, the, 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 yes. yeah, to perform the cleansing. Uh, there is uh, water there, cleansing, and even maybe offer sacrifice for yourself to make sure that uh, uh, you are clear <laughs> with everything. Okay. And so, uh, uh, in, in, in such the case, yeah, it means that uh, hindi basta basta ang pumasok sa presensya ng, De ng Diyos. It's not mm -hmm. uh, an ordinary thing. It is, you have to put a very high uh, regards and respect right. to the presence of the Lord and make sure uh, you are really uh, qualified to do so. Because uh, we have an example who died, okay? The two sons of Aaron uh, who died in the presence of the Lord because they offered Wrong. a strange fire. It means to say, they... <laughs> because nila even... Sinunod. Yeah, hindi nila sinunod. Hindi nila kinuha yung fire from a, 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 the source where they should get the fire. Kasi kita nyo, even the fire, there is a process of particular... That, that, that's how... God. That's how we see how serious... Uh, bad in dealing to even in this uh, ceremonies. Okay, so uh, okay, all right. Okay, totally nothing. So, so uh, bear in mind that this positional uh, sanctification is achieved through the ones and for all death of Jesus Christ. Some basis lang. Okay. Once and for all. Okay. Called experiential sanctification. Si Agad Sabansin. Si Malu Agad. Si mga tinatype mo daw. Experiential sanctification. Okay. Experiential sanctification. Now, Although positionally you are a saint, okay? although positionally by virtue of the death of Jesus Christ once and for all, and you have accepted it into your life positionally, God declared you righteous. It is secure once and for all. But your experience, 
you should experience real holiness into your life. Okay? And this experiential sanctification or experiential hold that pa fluctuate ito minsan holy ka minsan hindi right tao pa eh. you are you are a human being and and we are weak especially if you are not attending church right? if you're not reading the bible you are not praying so you will fluctuate your sanctification your holiness uh, will fluctuate okay uh, in your daily experience, from time to time you stumble, from time to time you commit uh, sin, and now and then. So, in other words, in your experience, your uh, sanctification, minsan eh, eh, mababa, mababa o mawala. Okay, l- l- let's read some scripture. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. By this will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of jesus christ once for all okay we have been sanctified through the offering okay and 15 for by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified and also 29 how much se- se- severe punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted the spirit of grace? As a position for Palarinian. Sorry. That still included some positional. Positional. Okay, and Now... May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved com- complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see, uh, now the, 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 the tense uh, or, or the term that you uh, Paul used here, now the God of peace himself, sanctify you. So parang you are in the process. Of being sanctified. So, uh, hindi ka tulad the previous that we have read uh, doon sa previous scriptures that it is all in the past tense and to say that uh, you are already sanctified by the blood of Jesus. But here uh, it is in the present uh, in the present tense in the present continuous action. Sanctified. That's the uh, that's the verb the tense of sanctified it is a present continuous action okay unlike uh, uh, the, the the verb don sa previous scripture in positional it is a past tense a that okay means say pagka that it is once and for all it is done okay but here it is a linear action okay it's a linear action that's why uh, it is a process so this is what we call the experience. That's the difference. So that is not conflicting. Okay, that's not conflicting. The first is uh, pertains to how God, your position before God, how God looks at you, he looks at you as saint. But here, uh, the process of uh, the experiential from sanctification is on you. Indeed, is the process of your life. How you. Uh, how you live your life as Christians. So, in other words, you have to grow, you have to be holy, you have to be sanctified. Okay, so also First Peter chapter 1, verse 16, because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. So, again, uh, if you notice that the term, uh, the, the verb that was used here is you should be, you shall be holy. It is like uh, uh, continuous, continuous okay, for I am holy. So that is not in conflict with when, when God says you are already holy by virtue of Jesus Christ. That is your position. But he, uh, by virtue that you are saints, you have to experience mm-hmm. holiness into your life. Okay, and this experiential sanctification grows. I don't grows as the believer dedicates his life to God 
and is nourished by the word of God. Okay, let's read that in Ephesians so that, chapter 5. Uh, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. Ano na pala to yung the, um, the third, the third, uh, which is the ultimate and ultimate ultimate sanctification ultimate sanctification that that is the future that is the goal that is uh what god uh, uh declare you to become in the future uh which is uh in the heavenly You're, it is equivalent to we hear maybe the the concept of glorification okay that this is the glorification uh that uh, Paul says that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her. The, the her there is uh, the previous uh, verses pertaining to the church. Okay, this is pertaining to the church as the bride of Jesus Christ he has chosen him so that he might sanctify her, being cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present himself the church in all her glory. Having no spot, no wrinkle, or anything to so say, perfect, blameless, holy. Okay, so that is the future. Not today. We have a lot of issues in the church. The church is not uh, blameless, or holy, but uh, we are on the process. That's why we are need. We need to grow in our uh, dedication to the Word of God to apply it into our life to live a life. Uh, worthy of our calling and so though when we will grow uh, in that uh, process of being glorified so that is our ultimate sanctification okay. so bear in mind three aspects or of sanctification uh, positional sanctification means to say that declared you holy uh, by virtue of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. You are a saint. Okay, so you can call yourself a saint. I'm Saint Joel. That's my position in God. That is how God sees me. That is how God sees you. Okay? You are a saint. And then secondly, experiential sanctification. This is the process. From glory to glory. It means to say uh, we have to grow. We have to uh, we have to achieve holiness uh, practically into our life. So that is uh, we are to eliminate uh, uncleanness, uh, sin into our life through our continuous dedication and submission to the Holy Spirit and uh, obedience to the Word of God. That's the those, those are the all. The two uh, uh, two ways, okay. Kalawang pamag, two means how we can achieve this experiential uh, holiness. In thirdly, ultimate sanctification. Ultimate sanctification. So all of us during the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and the second coming, when He will. Uh, uh, rapture us so we will attain this perfectness we will attain this glory uh, the, 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 the true holiness the true uh, righteousness okay so hindi lang sa position hindi lang sa tingin ng Diyos okay but we will achieve it uh, uh, truthfully you should say uh, we will uh, uh, we will be in that position a perfect position the 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 place of glorification without spot without wrinkle without any sin so that's why in the process of the rapture we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye okay so Eddie let's see if there are some Comments here. 
Okay, Brother Angel said, the perfect sacrificial lamb is Jesus because he is sinless. Right. Very, very right. Uh, that is also uh, pictured in the sacrificial system. Okay? Uh, in the Old Testament. Whenever they offer an animal as a sacrifice, they, they will not get basta basta any animal any animal in their uh, in their flock okay no they will select they will uh, uh, pick a perfect animal a perfect lamb okay without any uh, without any uh, 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 wrinkle any fault Okay, walang pilay, perfect, even, even maybe the, the, uh, the purr is perfect. So everything is perfect, walang sugat, walang peklat, okay, nothing. It's a perfect animal. Okay, so uh, whatever, especially in the Day of Atonement, okay, when people will go to the temple, uh, even Passover or or Yom Kippur, uh, they bring their animal. The priest will inspect the animal. Okay, the priest will inspect the animal. Every detail, every part of the animal, the claw, uh, uh, the body, the eyes, everything, the face, the ears. So if it is not perfect, uh, it is rejected. Okay, so uh, that's why <laughs> ang ginawang business ito ng mga pare uh, okay, sa templo. Ito yung story. Uh, this is the story where Jesus himself uh, was angry uh, when he went to the temple and saw this business going on, the, the money changing. The, why, why do you need a money changer in the temple? Because uh, all male has to pay what we call the temple tax. Okay, they, they have to pay temple tax. And the only required, only allowed payment is the temple coin. So it means to say you have to exchange your money with the temple uh, coin. That's why that explained the money changes there. And there are also uh, uh, ships and lambs and animals for sale that are already inspected okay so of course if you are coming from far far uh far far away going to the temple and you are bringing your animal on the way maybe nagasgas <laughs> ito you know and and you come to the temple and it's rejected so the easy way is don't bring your animal. Any way you can buy an inspected and perfect animal already in the temple. So that's the business of the priest. So, so <laughs> I remember in the Philippines when I, uh, you know, I uh, applied for my driver's license. Okay, in the Philippines. So uh, we will do. We will have that. Uh, practical or driving uh, driving test okay so we went there with our own car usually uh, you know the Philippines uh, they have uh, if we usually hindi naman katulad dito halos lahat ng mga tao may mga sasakyan right we have all our cars you can bring your own car to the driving test but not in the Philippines many people don't have their own car Okay, so business din yan, instruction. They have a car that is for rent. You will rent that. Eh kaso may dala ako. So we will not rent. Hindi naman nila ako mapersong hindi po pwedeng gamitin yung sasakyan. You know what? <laughs> when we are in the parking, the, the, the uh, what you call it, the examiner said, okay, back up, forward. Okay, you pass. That's it. <laughs> Should be... <laughs> We will drive all throughout, you know, but hindi na kasi uh, 
the examiner will not uh, waste his time. Hindi ka naman nagbayad ng renta. Ng, <laughs> ng renta. Ng iyong sasakyan. So that happens, ano, in the temple. Uh, the priests have their own business. And uh, they will reject uh, your animal if you bring your own animal and it's rejected. And they will suggest, yeah, buy, buy na lang. Why? You know, buy na lang doon sa kabilang uh, tindahan. You know, it's already inspected and you're good to go. So that's why that explained uh, that explained that uh, it's like a marketplace in the temple that makes uh, Jesus angry. Uh, what uh, they are doing in the house of God, okay? Uh, which is about the, uh, that God uh, didn't don't want to happen. Okay, uh, what else? Let's see. Yeah, uh, Yara said you have to leave the Christian life to continue to stay sanctified. That's true. That is the, ex the second aspect, experiential sanctification. Uh, maybe she meant leaving the Christian life is going to church, uh, reading the scripture, studying the Bible, and praying with the other believers, praying together. So those is the Christian life. Okay? And in, 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 in that process, you will become holy. You will be sanctified. Okay, Pastor Renauce, paano nakaka-relate dito po ang mga believer na hindi lumalag o ano po ang dapat maimungkahin ninyo? Okay, so yung mga the Christians that are not growing, hindi nag improve ang kanilang sanctification. Ano ang ating mungkahe? Ang ating mga mungkahe ay they have to uh, uh, to practice the spiritual discipline. Okay? Ano nga gawin? Yun nga, ang ating mungkahe. Sino? Ah, mga leaders. Yung pastor, halimbawa. Well, uh, we can do that much. Especially, we have to uh, encourage them the goal of being a Christian. That uh, a Christian life is a process of growing into maturity. Not just hanging in there. Okay, because Christians who are hanging in there, mahuhulog. I have uh, pictured that uh, in, in, in many of my sermons in the church, that uh, uh, you mga Christians that are just hanging, okay, on the edge, pag dumating ang persecution, ay madali silang malaglag. Okay? Uh, they are, they are, uh, on a de very uh, delicate uh, position of falling away. So these are the people that will fall away into... Because if your faith is not growing, if you are not maturing, okay, and it's stagnant, the tendency is for you to fall away into your faith. Okay? Nang hindi mo napapansin. Okay? Sabi niya, bonsai na Christian. Eh, yung bonsai, ano naman yun eh. Maganda naman yung bonsai. Because that's a breed. <laughs> May bonsai bang Christian? Okay. Yung hindi lumalago. Okay, sabi niya ba, yes, the same thing with me. Drive test, abandon. <laughs> ah, okay. Ganun din palang ginawa sa inyo. Okay. Atras abante lang, pasado na, may lisensya ka na. If you don't want to grow, that is your choice because the pastors are doing their best to remind them and care for them, but they choose to be like that. Si Malu. Okay, uh, yes, um, as I said, uh, as leaders, we can only do... March. You know, we cannot force 
uh, people. That's why it's very important that we involve them uh, to discipleship. That's the process, introduce the discipleship process uh, for them to grow. If they choose that, now, uh, my question is, are they really safe? That's my question. If they are not growing and if they don't want to grow, I will ask them, are you safe? Are you sure you are going to heaven? <laughs> because maybe you are just hanging out to the church, to the Christians, but you are not really safe. Because those who are saved and sanctified and saints will live a holy life. And they will grow. Look at John chapter 15. I, I hate to use this illustration. John chapter 15. This is the parable of the vine and the branches. Okay, Jesus Christ says, I am the vine. You are the branches. Who are you? The disciples, the believers. You are the branches. Without, He says that uh, your life as a branch comes from the vine. And he says, without me, you can do nothing. We depend on the vine. We depend on Jesus Christ. And then he said, if the branch will not produce fruit, they are not. Okay, Malu? If the branch will not produce fruit, the Father will remove. And the fruit na tinutukoy ni, ni, ni Jesus Christ dito is all, all kinds of fruits that pertaining to our maturity. Uh, it is the fruits of the Holy Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, joy, peace, low suffering, faith. Okay, this is the fruit of, uh, uh, of your worship as uh, I said, the fruit of your lips. Okay, it is also the fruit of uh, the soul's uh, that uh, you share the gospel with, those are fruits. So those are the fruits. And those fruits signifies if you are bearing fruit, okay? If you are bearing fruit, if the tree or if the tree is bearing fruit, means to say he is maturing. If you have a tree, what, what did God, what did Jesus did to a fig tree that is not bearing fruit? He cursed. The fig tree and it died because you see these are all clue and I think these are all clue for all those people who are just hanging around okay it's a church and not growing not maturing no fruits can be seen and Jesus Christ says you will be taken away Okay, you will be taking away mawawala ka <laughs> because you are not uh, 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 growing, you are not maturing, you are not bearing fruit. Itatapong ka sa apoy. So that's why uh, I, I will ask if you are not growing, if you are not bearing fruit, are you saved? Are you really committed your life to Jesus Christ? Okay, so that's for me is questionable. I am not judging who will be saved and not. We are not saved by works. That's, that is very clear. But your works, your fruits, is the proof or evidence that you are saved. Okay? Did you get it? We are not saved by our works. We are not saved by the fruits that we bear in our life. We are not saved by that. But bearing fruits is a sign that you are saved. So if those Christians are not bearing fruit, so the question, are they really saved? Did they really understand what is to be a Christian? Okay, so that, that, that's a problem to a lot of churches. We have a lot of people who are attending that didn't understand. They thought that uh, being a Christian is like that. No, you are to bear fruit. You are to mature. You are to produce the holiness. Okay? 
uh, that is pertain to be a Christian. Kaya, ang tawag ko sa kanila, they are kung sa, ano, sa, you know, sa, alagyan, limbawa, this is the church, andito lang sila naka, ano, kaya nakasabit, you know, nakasabit sa edge. They are just hanging in. Pagka merong pag-uusig at pag-alog na dumating, sila ang unang malalaglag. And that's why Jesus said in Acts, in John 15, sila'y tatanggalin. At yun ang pamamaraan ng Diyos para tanggalin sila. Persecution, you know, problem. Aalog mo kasi. Kaya, ang tunay na Kristiyano nandun doon sa loob. Committed. Growing. Maturing. Kaya kahit na merong pag-uusig, kahit anong mangyari, sila'y secure. Okay? Those only who are committed, who are truly saved, are secure. Okay? Pero yung mga nag-hang out, they are not secure. Okay? So I hope uh, that uh, answer that uh, paano yung mga Kristiyanong hindi lumalago. They choose that. Uh, and, and that is because maybe they are not saved. Okay? Be afraid of that you have everything in life because maybe someday God will take it away. Then ask yourself, am I saved today, tomorrow, and forever? Then it's too late to start today because God is there. Thank you. Okay. All right, sabi ni brother, three kinds of Christian in the church, pretenders, spectators, and worshippers. Yes, there's a lot of, uh, uh, not everyone really that coming to the church, oh, pretenders. Uh, these are the, the ano, uh, ito yung mga nagpipretend lang. Okay, pretenders. They're pretending that they are saved, but uh, in reality, not. So, spectators, they are just there to watch. They are not safe. But uh, the true safe people are those worshippers. Thank you, Brother Angel. Okay, sabi ni Pastor Ranao, si kailangan na patanggapin uli. <laughs> patanggapin uli. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, thank you for all your comments. And, and uh, I hope you understand that uh, being a Christian uh, is not just being forgiven of your sins. To be a Christian, to be a son of God is truly uh, to, uh, to grow in our maturity, to be like Jesus Christ, to exemplify into a life what a true Christian is all about. Okay, and now we'll go to the third, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, yes. The work of the Holy Spirit. So, ano naman ang uh, function ng Holy Spirit? That is the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit is sal- in salvation involves the convicting ministry to the unbelievers. So, you see, uh, the Trinity, the three persons uh, working on the process of salvation of sinners, the Father uh planning he elected he predestined he adopted jesus christ uh, executed it by uh, 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 by dying and paying the penalty to make it possible but it is not complete even though jesus christ died and ready paid the penalty of our for our sins we it must be applied to the people and that's the work of the holy spirit so it is the holy spirit who will go to the person to convict him of his sins, sabi rito, uh, involves the convicting ministry to the unbelievers. So, in other words, if the person, you heard the gospel that being preached or you read the scripture, and if the Holy Spirit will not convict you, it's nothing for you. And that explains why some people... Uh, Although they heard the gospel, you know, that explains why they will not accept because uh, the absence of the convicting ministry of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's see. 
the scripture. John 16, verse 8, and he, means the Holy Spirit, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. So it is the Holy Spirit will come to that person. That's why it's very necessary in the sharing of the gospel. Okay? It's very necessary that we pray for the person specifically. We want them to be saved. We pray that the Holy Spirit will work on him. Kasi kahit anong share natin, whatever, although it is not uh, it, it is not our responsibility to save the person, to convict the person, but our responsibility is to share, to preach, to teach the Word of God, share them the good news, but it is the Holy Spirit's responsibility to convict them of their sins. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. So if the person understands, and the person uh, 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 understand and, and, and look at himself as needing forgiveness. Okay? And that is because the Holy Spirit convict him. And when he, he uh, and if the unbeliever is convicted by the Holy Spirit, he then, now the Holy Spirit will regenerate the person and that will give him a new life. Okay. Kaya nga may uh, sinasabi natin born again. Born again ang isang tao because the Holy Spirit uh, regenerate the person. Titus 3.5, he saved us not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness but, but according to his mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. So it's the Holy Spirit who regenerates, who makes you, who gives you the new life. Uh, that's why you are born again. Okay? A new life that is in you. It is through the Holy Spirit. And not only that, the, uh, then the Holy Spirit will, uh, will reside in you. Okay? John 14, 16, I will ask the Father, Jesus said, he will give you another helper, and that be that he may be with you forever. He is uh, pertaining to the Holy Spirit as the another helper, another comforter in some version, another comforter, uh, which is the Holy Spirit, that he may be with you forever. So he will indwell with the believers. The Holy Spirit is in you. And also baptizing the believer into union with Christ and other Christians. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ, you have been baptized into his death. According to Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 5, 3 and 4. Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So, and also the Holy Spirit will seal you. The sealing will seal the believer. Uh, Ephesians 1.13 in him, you also after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. So what is that sealing? Okay, what does it mean? It means that uh, sealing during the time when you are sealed, it, it, it means uh, ownership. Okay, that is uh, the animals sinisil you on, okay, and, and, and all the royalties had their own seal. Pag uh, tinatatak yun, so say, you own that property, you, do, you own that animal. So, uh, the believers are sealed by the Holy Spirit uh, pertaining to God's ownership to us. So that's that's why we are guaranteed, we are secured. Uh, our salvation is secured because of the sealing 
of the Holy Spirit. Okay. All right. That's end our lesson. Let's see. Any comments? Tayong dito ni Pastor, paano po yung hahanapin ng Lord ang panayang dugo sa ating mga pala? Anong ibig sabihin, hahanapin? Siguro kung hindi natin sineran, yeah. And then, remember the particular verse, I think, uh, uh, that says that uh, it is it is because our responsibility to tell them the good news. My message this Sunday is about uh, we are on the sixth lifestyle of the first church in the book of Acts. So letter tinatayo telling others about Christ. So it's all about uh, the example of the believers in the book of Acts, particularly Apostle Paul, how he shared the gospel. What uh, what uh, important uh, tips that we can uh, look at how Paul, and I, I believe we can learn from Paul how we can, not necessarily what are the things that we are to say, okay, so there's a lot of materials, okay, uh, and, 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 and uh, uh, tips on how to share the gospel to the people, but uh, my message based on, I think, Acts chapter 17, when Paul went to Athens and preached the gospel to them. So how he did it is very, very uh, enlightening. Okay, And I think a lot of uh, those uh, people who are doing evangelism uh, yeah. are not doing right. Okay, so uh, uh, this we will look at how Paul shared the gospel. Mm -hmm. How, what he did in sharing the gospel. Okay, so that is my last message this Sunday on the lifestyle, the lifestyle of the church, of the early church. Sparing the impact if you are, uh, if you are uh, uh, following my our Sunday uh, service messages. Okay, so uh, that ends our lecture number three. So we will study next week uh, about this is God's side, the process of salvation, part two is man's side. Okay, so that's why we have to look uh, uh, both sides. We have a response. God did his part, and man has to do his part in the process of salvation. So we will look at that next week. Okay? All right. Na-check na ba yung ating attendance? Lahat? Are you sure? May mga dumating eh. Marieta. Wala lang si Okay. Ah, oh, kasi siguro, no? May bisita sila. Okay. Okay, so uh, that ends uh, lecture number three and uh, part one. This <laughs> lecture number three. Part two will be next week. Meron ba tayo next week? Birthday mo eh. Huh? Birthday mo yung next week eh. Oh, hindi. 20 pa lang Wednesday. Webes ang birthday. Okay, so uh, we'll see. We'll see. If we, uh... Okay, thank you very much for everyone that has come and attended uh, our session this morning, uh, th this evening, this morning. And uh, God bless you po. Uh, and kung, share nyo na lang doon sa mga absent. Okay? 
because they can still uh, review this and and listen to our discussion. Okay, good evening po sa inyo. Let's pray, Lord. We thank you very much, O oh God, that uh, you have planned for our salvation. Thank you, Jesus Christ, that you have uh, executed and died to pay the penalty of our sins in order that we will be saved. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming to us, convicting us of our sins, regenerating our, our, our life, giving us new life, indwelling us, and sealing us. That uh, guarantees or, or give us the security of our salvation. So we thank you and bless your people. Bless those who will uh, continue their day and those who are ending their day. Thank you, Lord. In this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, good night po. Good morning sa inyong lahat. Good night, everyone. God bless. Marinig nyo? <laughs> And si Bueno. Nagchika mo sa bed. Sino ba yung wala? Sabi. Si Ed na. Pagod na pagod na kasi ako eh. Ayan. Ayan. Good evening po sa inyong lahat. Magandang hindi pala. Good morning. Ayan. <laughs> good, good morning everyone. Have a good day po. See you tomorrow morning sa amin. See you tonight naman sa inyo. Ingat po kayo lahat. God bless. Bye-bye. God bless you.